It is a very specific niche within script supervision. People might not even realize how different the process is when you work in comedy. And just to uh, clarify, I'm not talking about live to tape. Live to tape is a different, uh, a completely different skill set, almost completely different from what we do in a single camera, quote unquote. Single camera is a misnomer because we don't use single cameras almost anywhere in the world anymore. We always shoot with at least two, maybe three cameras, maybe 10 10 cameras, right? In most film and TV. So to say single camera shooting, it just means the traditional kind of filmmaking uh, that is used in film and television, not on location, not in front of a live studio audience. So for those who don't know me, I'm Daniela Sione. I have been script supervising for over 30 years and training script supervisors for over 25 of those years. And oddly enough, I've never taught this specific top topic. And it is one of the specializations that I have been known for uh, in a, a chunk of my career. I've got a lot of experience in comedy and it is my chosen path. So among the things we're going to talk about today, besides the, all the technical things you need to know about script supervising comedy, if you know for sure you want to work in comedy, yeah, it is a lifestyle. It's a different lifestyle. Believe it or not, script supervising comedy is harder than drama. So it's going to require much more of you as a script supervisor. And I love that about it. It's way more challenging, actually, um, but also way more um, fulfilling uh, to hear an audience laugh. Uh, aside from my my script supervision career, I was a stand-up comic for eight years, and I'm a comedy writer now. So comedy screenwriting is something that I do and that I teach and that I've won like 12 awards for. It's something, it is my passion. It, comedy has always been my passion. And whether I was behind the camera or in front of the camera, because I'm a character actress as well, um, or a stand up or, you know, comedy, it's just always been part of my life. It's my survival skill. Comedy, spoiler alert, is a survival skill for trauma. So you're going to meet a lot of really interesting people working in comedy. I, working in comedy has kind of helped sustain my um my love of of doing script for so long because there's a heavy burnout rate in our profession. And I think just continually when I'm down or when I'm like bored or when I'm not challenged enough, I will just seek out a comedy. So we're going to talk about strategizing your career so that you keep coming back to working in comedy because believe it or not, that's something you got to do. So today, as you know, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the logistics all along the way in the process of uh, prepping, timing, you know, workshopping a script, working on set, um, you know, your comedy notes, how they're going to be different from your regular uh, as read script and, um, you know, uh, editing concepts, you should know coverage concepts, you should know specifically relating to comedy and comedy writing concepts, you should know all Although we are not comedy writers, I mean, I am, but although many of you are not necessarily going to be comedy writers or or are currently comedy writers, though some of you are, um, you need to understand a lot of the concepts because you're working directly with that script. You're working directly with those writers, that director, and those actors. So there's a lot of extra layers you need to understand to be a really super in-demand comedy script supervisor. And that's why we're here today. I do have a little mini course called How to Interview Your Director and Land the Gig, but I also always start with the interview process uh, in anything I teach in terms of strategy. Um, so let's start there. How is a comedy interview different from a regular interview for script supervision? Um, and you guys know my, when I say you guys, I mean, my director whisperer students know my strategy of directing sorry, interviewing the director as much as they are interviewing you to take control of that interview, but also to understand that um, the movie they're trying to make and understand the way their brain works. So you understand also if you can literally, if you can work with this person, they're doing the same for you. And when it comes to comedy interviews, there's an extra layer that I probably didn't mention in the mini course because the mini course was about all kinds of interviewing. But if, if comedy is a, a milieu that you want to work in, listen to my favorite fancy words, Milia. If it's a milieu you want to work in, you probably want to do some comedy training yourself. It really goes a long way in that interview. So uh, type in the chat if you've ever studied at Second City, if you've ever trained as an improviser, if you've done stand-up, if you've done sketch writing, if you're a comedy writer, type a one in the chat. Um, it's not mandatory, but it really helps. It. Uh, I'm going to talk through some of the concepts today that, that you will learn in some of those places, but to actually put it in your body and do it and to have the director trust and know that you have done that is actually goes a long way in the interview. So 
Um, I would just highly recommend it. A, it's super fun, but B, it does help you in your job if if you want to do, um, uh, if you want to be like an A lister comedy. Uh, and it's again not a hundred percent necessary, but very helpful and very helpful in that interview to mention that you've trained. So some of the major schools are uh, the Second City, UCB, Upright Citizens Brigade, the Groundlings in LA. Um, some of the major actors you will be working with in comedy films have studied at one or more of those schools. There used to be IO Improv Olympics in Chicago. I don't think they exist anymore. Um, and there, I guess there will be more schools uh, popping up. It's, a, it's kind of important in a way to understand the, the actor's process because all of those schools have slightly different leanings and yet some of the same concepts, which we're going to talk about today. Yes, ending, building scenes, game of the scene. We need to understand game of the scene. We'll talk about that today. Uh, although our job as script supervisors is not creative, understanding that level of comedic creativity is sort of why I'm, I am I thought this warranted a completely separate class because uh, you being able to speak the language of comedy with the director, with the actors, with the writers is going to make you invaluable. And I can't stress that enough. I did it all by accident, meaning like I wasn't intentionally trying to have a comedy career for a while until I did my Big Fat Greek Wedding and realized how much I loved working in comedy. And at the time I was studying, I just had started studying acting. I was in my late twenties and um, I had just started going to second city shortly after that. In fact, my big fat Greek wedding actually inspired me to start taking classes at second city because Neo Vardalos went to second city and because Andrea Martin, cause I got to work with her and I was a huge comedy fan growing up. So I thought, well, why, why aren't I taking improv classes? And that was sort of when my whole comedy journey began and led me to the comedy screenwriting and stand-up side of my life, which has been such an amazing side of my life. For those um, not in my program, uh, if you haven't seen me talk about this, I always talk about uh, nurturing your creativity um, because we can't necessarily express our creativity on set unless we are invited to, which you'll find in comedy you're invited to a lot more because there's a kind of a rule on set in comedy which is best idea wins it's a rule that Judd Apatow has Paul Feig has Greg Daniels has uh I've worked with some of these people um as you'll hear me name drop throughout the, the I haven't worked with Judd but you know Paul has worked with Judd and has told me the stories and of course I've worked with Paul um you know some of the actors will tell you uh, the kind of uh things uh that are but but best idea wins and the best idea can come from the grip and can can often come from the script supervisor um not that you have to contribute jokes but you might <laughs> And the more improv training you have, I mean, I certainly have, I can't count the number of times jokes I've blurted out have made it into the final film, or at least into the rough cut. And sometimes the director will call me and say your joke made it into the movie, which is for me like this great thing, but it's, it's best idea wins is, is a general way of working um, in on some shows, even on suits, which that wasn't our way of working on set. I think I've had jokes put into the rough cut three times. I didn't check the I didn't check whether they made it into the final show, but hopefully at least one of my three uh, pitches on suits made it into the final show. Anyway, the, those are the reasons to take um, improv training or sketch or any kind of comedy uh, training. I do teach comedy writing, not to plug my own courses, but I'm one of the few people in the world that teaches punch up because I do script punch up. Any Anything like that is... Um, is excellent to bring up in an interview. You might even compare notes if the director, often directors have trained at those places, right? Often directors have done, well, in comedy, have done like stand up. So Paul told me about his life as a touring stand up comic in the 80s before he wrote Freaks and Geeks and said how integral that was. Uh, to his process in becoming a comedy director and a comedy writer. And I had no idea he had done that, but I know how integral stand-up was for me to become a comedy writer. So we had so many of those conversations on set. But let me backtrack and go back to the interview with Paul. I talk about this a lot, but if you've never heard me tell this story, it's a great story because it sort of set, it sets up the reason for this course to exist. I... um met Paul at like 8 a.m. at a Toronto, usually Toronto hotels are often where we do our interviews, hotel lobbies, right? But usually we do them in the middle of the afternoon. I had done an 18 hour shift on People of Earth because spoiler alert, sometimes your comedy TV shows, they have much longer, uh, <laughs> much longer days involved, right? And so I had done the, this 18 hour day wrapped at 6 a.m., had this 8 a.m. interview with Paul 
one of my idols, by the way. And I knew I was a hot mess. Cause like who wouldn't be a hot mess after a uh, shooting for 18 hours. And I walked into that interview, uh, saying, Paul, I just want to preface this interview by saying I've just worked 18 hours. You're one of my comedy heroes. I'm raw. I'm probably going to be completely unfiltered and just tell you, <laughs> I just got I show over you and just tell you how much I love your work. And he said, Oh, what show are you on? And I said, People of Earth. And he said, All my friends are on that show. So we started talking about the show. And then we, and then um, he said to me, Because when I interviewed with Paul, it wasn't for Bridesmaids, it wasn't for Spy. He had already made those movies, he had already made Ghostbusters. He was interviewing me for a simple favor, which if you saw the movie, um, and I hope you saw the movie because I script supervised it. No, it was, it was a great movie. Uh, he said, I am not going to direct this like a psychological thriller. I am going to direct this like a comedy. And I knew what that meant. And he knew what that meant. And he knew that I knew what that meant. And I leaned in and slapped the table and said, bring it. And I had said, bring it actually, after he said, you know, I make script supervisors cry. <laughs> And I laughed because this is one of the nicest people in show business. As many comedy people are very nice because they know who they are, right? Comedians, we know who we are. We've gone through our trauma. I recently did um, a five-day comedy writing challenge, which some of you have taken. And in that class, I got people to like come face to face with their traumas so they could write comedy about it, right? And that's what comedians essentially spend their lives doing. So they're generally very... Uh, I mean, together people with a lot of issues, but they know their issues. They know, they know their shit. <laughs> As I tell all my writers, you got to know your shit, like in life, in any kind of writing, but in comedy writing, you really have to know what your flaws are because you're going to play them out in everything you write and everything you do. So um, he knew that I knew that he knew, like we all knew what that meant. And I said, bring it. Cause I, I told him I live for doing comedy.